long-term investment in property rentals is still attractive to many private investors, with the number of people wanting to rent property continuing to increase. But how can you make the most of the opportunity and reduce risks? I'm here to find out how to make lettings pay. Peter, we hear a lot in the media that the buy-to-let market is a dead duck, not worth investing in anymore. Is this the case? You're right, Nicky. If you, if you believed everything you read, you wouldn't be going anywhere near it. But no, it's not. It's not the case at all. I think, however, we have been running into a problem after a very, very strong buy-to-let market over the last few years. So people have been making money? Uh, they, they have. The vast majority cannot be complaining about the sort of returns they've been getting over the years. I think the problem we've had, though, Nicky, is that those, what I refer to as the coffee table investors, the dinner party investors, who have jumped in to buy the odd one property are now finding themselves in trouble. Right, so they're not going to get the returns immediately. I think what they've been doing, and this is what we've been warning about, is people think that they can let a property for 52 weeks a year at the absolute sort of maximum rent. And what you can't do is just phone up your agent and say, oh, my mortgage has gone up by £100 a month. Can you please put the rent up? It doesn't work like that. OK. If I'm a landlord, what are the benefits to me of going through an ARLA agent? Oh, there are some really, really clear benefits of only using ARLA agents. And what I would say is all about protection and standards and you being able to trust the people that you are dealing with. The fact that ARLA members have to abide by codes of practice, by rules, they have to have a complaints procedure in place. Very importantly, every deposit that is paid to an ARLA agent has to be protected under the tenancy deposit scheme. And that benefits the landlord as well as the tenant? Very good question, Nikki. The The fact is that the deposit is important, is protected, and the tenant wants to know that. But by using an ARLA agent as well, every ARLA agent has to belong to what's called our Client Money Protection Insurance Scheme. So, obviously, an agent doesn't just hold the deposit, which is protected under the tenancy scheme, but they also can hold a lot of rent while they're passing it across to you. In the hopefully unlikely event, but it does happen, unfortunately, that the um, agent disappears with the client's money, our scheme actually uh, insurance kicks in and that means that your money your rental money as a landlord is protected right, by if you so use an ARLA agent. The landlord has got that reassurance as well. Absolutely. So overall Peter would you still say that buying property as an investment is still a good idea? You know, we're finding at the moment that people are beginning to worry about whether there's any point in having their money in stocks and shares, they're worrying about their pensions, and they're actually going back to the safe old things, and that tends to be gold, and it also tends to be bricks and mortar. So as long as it's not being looked at as a very short-term investment, and you're taking a medium to long-term view, um, I personally believe that the demand for rental accommodation is going to continue. In fact, there are a number of people who say it's going to get, uh, going to get increased and get even bigger, and so therefore from that point, of view, from an investment point of view, hopefully nothing wrong with having your money in bricks and mortar still. Brilliant. Thanks, Peter. Okay. And I've been talking to Peter about the current letting market, and you're going to tell me about the practicalities of becoming a landlord. How would I actually start? Okay. Well, very good advice is the location. You need to choose your property. Um, profiles of tenants have changed over the years. You have relocating professional people that are looking for certain things, families looking for schools, that sort of advice. So the impact on the, of the location could be because it's near good schools, that kind of thing? Yes, definitely. Um, you know, local transport, varying things, really. Right. So first of all, you've got to go and do a bit of um, exploration, really. Yes. Well, I think you go to an ARLA agent for the advice that you're going to get, and that's, that covers an, a multitude of, of, of pieces of advice. Um, starting with the, the location. They generally know their area, they generally know the profile of a tenant, they know their market, or they should, and um, basically you go on from there. And you're mentioning the profile of a tenant. I mean, is it mostly students that rent these days? No, 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 no. Um, tenants are varied. They are, you know, people, uh, it's a second home. Very often people working away from home, um, people relocating from another country. Um, short-term people renting before buying. So it's, it can be very professional people. Oh, yes, definitely. So therefore very high standard of property. Yes, very high. Right. Very high. What about legal obligations? What would be my legal obligations as a landlord? Enormous, really. Uh, you know, it's a serious business. You, you've got people living in your house. You've got a property that you want to maintain and you want to do the right thing, which is why you choose an ARLA agent. You come to a professional person. So you can advise, that. an ARLA agent can advise. Yes, 
Definitely. What sort of legal requirements would there be then? It's fire regulations for soft furnishings, gas safety certificates, repairs and upkeep to a property, tenancy deposit scheme, permission from your lender to actually rent out the property and EPCs recently this year. Right, it is a long <laughs> list. So yes. the EPC, that's the Energy Performance Certificate. Yes. What do I need to do about that? We could organise that for you, as with most of it. Um, we can, the costing is minimal, it's a 10 year certificate, we can organise that. Okay, that, that's good. Now the other thing you mentioned was about you have to have permission from your lender. So you mean when I, when I purchase the property, my mortgage company or whatever, they, they need to know about it? Yes, yes, they need to give, they need to be aware you're going to rent the property out. And you need to have permission from them in order to um, give a tenancy to a tenant. And is, and is that normally a, a smooth smooth process? Generally, yes. You know, buy to let, uh, used to it. Um, generally, that's fine. Okay. So, is there anything else I should be aware of as a new landlord? Well, you, you need the advice of, of a, an agent that deals in the market uh, on lots of things. Decor, furnishings, profile of your tenant, you know, referencing. An enormous amount of, of work is needed. So it really does make sense to come to another agent? Yes, yes. Yeah. And thanks, it's very helpful. Steve, your company specialises in advising landlords on furnishings. What kind of impact does that have on letting a flat, the furnishings? It has an immense impact. Primarily, furnished properties will let faster. Oh. It's just a fact. Um, Tenants aren't going to live in a property with it unfurnished, so the furnishing issue has to be addressed at some stage. And it just makes common sense to, to make those issues go away in advance. You, if you're, you want to maximise a viewing, if tenants are here and they can instantly see the way they can live in it, where they're going to sit, where and they're they going to watch They can instantly move in. It's, it's done. And they know there's just no further decisions to make. Do they like the area? Do they like the property? The rest of it is done. Yeah. Brilliant. Well, let's have a look at some other areas in the house. OK. So Steve, this, this business that you're in, has it been going long as, as a business? Have people been using your services for a while? Um, well, we've been, we've been uh, trading in this area for around 10 years. Um, but in that 10 years, the, the marketplace has, has evolved. There are more landlords, there are more professional landlords. And I think now uh, people just want the, uh, the issues to go away. And that's what we can make happen. OK. So from my point of view as a landlord, why would I want to use your services? I think primarily where where we're required is that we are our industry specialists. We're good at, sp at specifying the product for the properties. Um, we understand the nature of what we're trying to achieve, who the end user is, the style of properties, and, and I think it's it's getting a feel for for the end user. And I think the mistakes that sometimes landlords can make that they're they're imposing maybe too much of their own taste, and we we kind of take that out of the mix. I suppose that's a very natural thing, isn't it? Once uh, you've become a landlord and you've bought a property, then you want to put things in that you like. What what are the pitfalls of doing that? Yeah, of course, it's it, it's a it's a it's a classic pitfall. Um, that landlords want the shopping experience. They have this exciting new venture. It's a it's a new property which maybe they haven't bought for years. Um, to then so that to then go and enjoy the shopping experience is is a natural thing to try and do the problem the problems that that drives is that they're making personal taste decisions on a property that isn't meant for them to live in yes okay so what are the real things to avoid in terms of choice of furniture I think there are some some basic basic guides that uh, that landlords need to bear in mind and there are the the, the first one is to to respect the space people are renting space they're not actually looking at renting the actual furnishings that are in there they're renting space and they want to have maximum use of that and maximum flexibility you do of course still have to ensure that they have obvious zones that they can use and you do want to control the way they use the property to a degree um, but there are things like gender neutral don't make offensive colour decisions, don't have bright reds or bright blues everywhere. So you do need to keep the, the main pieces in, in the property fairly neutral. That yes. doesn't mean bland, it just means neutral. I was going to say, yes, you still want it to look stylish of and, course. and homely as well. Yeah, it has to be stylish, homely, durable. There are lots of other considerations in ensuring that the fabrics are, uh, will, will last the course and maybe that's scotch guarding or other protective measures. But And you can accessorise properties to make them look more interesting, but they're easily withdrawn if they're, if they're not working or the tenants desire them to be changed. Yes, okay, so there's, a, there's an element of flexibility in the choices of course, that you make yeah, as well. But you can't change those if you've gone for something, a really offensive piece of furniture, or it's too large. Yeah, or it's a very large sofa or Correct. something yeah, like yeah. that. Yeah. yeah, Really interesting. Thanks very much, Steve. Okay, no problem. I've learned a lot today about becoming a landlord. If you want to find out more, then why not go to the Arla website? They've got a special section just for landlords at www. 
arla.co.uk.